Well, good afternoon, everybody. Tuesday, yes. November the 10th. Tuesday, November the 10th, Lisa. Mm -hmm. You know, we're only like two weeks away from Thanksgiving. We are. Very close. Amazing how mm -hmm. fast time flies, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I guess we, we better turn over our, oh, yep. our glass. Because we don't. There we forget go. that. All right. Okay. And I want to thank Jim Burke for the photo of the day. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that was cool. Yep, that was a good good picture. So, so we got a lot to share today, don't we? We do. It's kind of a busy agenda. So. Yeah, not quite as bad as the one from was it last Thursday? It was really yeah, that one was worse. So <laughs> yeah, this one isn't quite as bad, but it's it's still pretty full. Yeah, so. we got a lot of stuff going yep, on. Yeah, a lot so. of good stuff. I'm gonna tell you what though, I'm enjoying the weather. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we've had a little bit of rain here last night, and it's a little overcast today, but right. How many times have we been in November and had 70-degree weather? Oh. I mean, that's yeah. it's really great. I mean, yep. I love it. Yep. So I could I could go all winter like that. Mm -hmm. but I, know not, I know a lot of people like the cold weather, but uh, I'm one of those ones I'd like to kind of keep it mild. Yeah, so, I would take fall. You know, we, we get people to come in and give us a hard time about the, the temperatures in our offices, right? Absolutely. We like it warm and toasty in <laughs> yeah, our office, do. don't we? And nobody else does. <laughs> so they come in there and they sweat. See, well, they don't stay long, though. This is why Michelle never comes into our office. She has to stay in the middle because <laughs> it's 75 in our offices, and she That's keeps right. hers at 65. So it's, it's oh, you know, just the yep. way it is. So, yeah. Well, okay. So we got. let's just dive into the stuff today. Okay. We, so Trivia question trivia, first, right? And we are not going to say who the trivia question is from. It's going to be a mystery right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll announce it later. We'll we announce it later, yep. right, with the yep. answer, right? But mystery for now because we're just worried that it might – it might – lead people to a certain answer. It might. You never know. It might not, but it might. might not. Um, the prize is a $10 Target gift card. Yeah, we're on Target with that. And the question today, well, first, you're going to call Michelle. Yes. Okay. Michelle. 336-389-4103. So Michelle is ready once I read this question. <laughs> is she ready? She's Are you ready, ready. Michelle? She's ready. Okay. She's got to do both jobs today. I know. So, you know Brian's not I know. here today. No, no Brian so. today. So. so Okay. She's got, she's, got okay. A, she's got a full slate here. In what world city was the world premiere of Handel's Messiah presented in April 1742? Yeah. In what world city was the world premiere of Handel's Messiah presented in April 1742? Hmm. That's I think I'd have to look this one up. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, somebody as much as, didn't. As much as I like Handel's Messiah, I don't know the answer to yeah, this I, one. I don't so I don't know what it is. I don't know what it would be. So Michelle already got a phone call and she ran out of the room. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's the right answer, well, that's but true. she's she's already got a phone call. But that's so. somebody that couldn't have had time to even look it up. So I don't see how you could, known. right? Right. I don't see how you could. But we'll see. You know, I have to admit, now that we're talking about Handel's Messiah, I'm going to miss that this year. You know, I almost you every year I usually go over yep. to Winston-Salem because the, uh, the symphony over there puts on uh, Handel's Messiah. Um, and I love going to that. I mean, right. it's one of my favorite things to do. A, sure. That's a childhood memory of mine. My, my dad was a huge Handel's Messiah fan. And um, he used to take us all the time. And it's funny. It's a... I think for a lot of people, it's somewhat acquired taste mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because the music's a little bit different. Sure. And I remember as a kid growing up, um, I used to love the choruses, but you know, I wasn't such a big, stuff. big, big fan of the, you know, of the other stuff. Right, and right. Um, now that I've gotten older and I got a real appreciation more, for, right. you know, the actual music itself all the way through. So it's it's sure. a good thing. So I'll, I'll miss that this year. I don't think they're doing and it this year. And you've gotten your daughter involved into it too, right? Yeah, so she's so. she's gotten it. My sons have not acquired a taste for that. And, and Sheila never has acquired a taste for that. But if, we're if we go out to dinner ahead of time, they might they right. might, they might might indulge that. But oh, uh, You have to yeah. bribe them a little bit. I have to something. bribe them. And, you know, we can't go out to dinner this year, so I can't no, bribe with that anymore. No, so. that's right. Well, should we look at the coronavirus okay, statistics? Yeah. Let's go with the updates. So Michelle hasn't come back in the room yet, so I don't know if she, it's a good news or bad news thing. But so okay, so we did the um, statistics last last time we did it was last Thursday. So it's been five days since our last update. Again, we pull all this information from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services dashboard, um, and this was kind of hard to believe, Lisa. We over the last four days have averaged. 40,000 completed tests, mm. 40,000 a day. Wow. 
It's 201,911 on the last day. The last five days, excuse me, the last five days. Wow. So in, out of those 201,911, we've had 11,781 new positive cases. So that's 5.8%. So not too bad. I mean, yeah. you know, that to me shows maybe we're starting to pull back a little bit. Because, you know, we were getting up there mm -hmm. seven. And, and, right. and daily, right. I know, they put a daily statistic on that dashboard. And sometimes it's 7.5%. Sure. But the other days it's less. So, but, you know, over the last five days, like I said, with the number of new positives versus the number of tests, um, it's 5.8%. Um, unfortunately, our hospitalization rate have gone up a little bit since last week. It's gone up 37. We're at 1,230 in the hospital. And unfortunately, we've also had 112 um, additional deaths since last Thursday. We're at 4,660 as a state. Um, so I went back, I was trying to decide how to present the information for some of the county breakdowns. So I did it again based upon cases per 100,000 residents in the county, because I always think that's kind of a, a telling thing. And I did it for the last seven days, not since the start. I just did it for the last seven days to see if there was some trends there. And, you know, Guilford is high. We're at 186. Um, but, you know, believe it or not, Forsyth is even higher than us. They're at 214. And then some of the other counties that, you know, used to be, you know, have a lot more cases than us have kind of calmed down a little bit. Durham's at 155. Mecklenburg County's at 159. And Wake's at 116. So... You know, they're a little less than us. Um, however, you know, when you look at it just strictly from a case standpoint and how many cases has been over the last um, week, um, Mecklenburg still has 1,768 new cases. Wake had 1,288 new cases. Uh, Guilford here had 997. Forsyth, 820. And Durham had 498. And then I just looked, um, again, just, you know, I, was, I told you about the fact that, you know, we we're at 186 for, um, per 100,000 cases last seven days. I just looked at the counties that were the highest over the last seven days, you know, beyond the five counties that we typically look at. And um, there was four of them that were up over 300, um, 300 cases per 100,000 residents. Um, they're all... Um, rural counties, Sampson County, 312, Columbus County, 333, Alexander, 496, and Mitchell County, 588. Yeah. So that's in a seven-day period. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we mentioned last Thursday, we're seeing um, a lot of the rural areas mm -hmm. are starting to kind of pick up in the number of cases that they're having. And, you know, when you look at the map on uh, that, that uh, dashboard that they have, and you can see a lot of the rural counties are – struggling a little bit um, with um, having more cases. Um, and they just haven't been taking the precautions, I think, right, necessarily right. that we have been doing. And so because they didn't start with it initially, they so maybe they felt like, we're fine. Safe, you know, they're I safe. And, you know, it's a little bit like a protective bubble. You know, right? you, once you kind of think that you're not going to get it, sure, and all of a sudden sure. it starts and coming it up, it, it sneaks up on you. So and once it hits, we know how it can travel well, then. Unfortunately, I mean, it we just, do. It yeah. goes like that. Um, and then just looking at nursing homes and residential care facilities, um, since the beginning of this, we've had 21,683 positive cases. Again, that's 7.3% of the current total cases, which is we're approaching fastly 300,000 cases in the state. So we're about 7.3%. And then as far as the deaths go, we're at 2,315 out of 4,660 total deaths. So you know, again, 49.7%. We're right around that same, unfortunately, that same death rate. Uh, this is the one that concerned me a little bit. Um, the outbreaks, um, nursing homes and residen residential care facilities. You know, we saw it go up pretty good size last Thursday. Mm -hmm. I think it went up some 30-some last Thursday uh, from when the last time we reported. Well, it went up another 16 um, today uh, or for the last five days. So we're at 357 um, mm -hmm nursing homes and residential care facilities. And so, um, you know, it just, it's just continued to be a fight. It's a, it's a war. Uh, it's a war over COVID at this point. And um, it's not an easy war. And, um, you know, we've been very blessed as a community. We, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, we've had our shares of, you know, we had the St. Andrews outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we've had now our first independent living, positive person. Um, and we've had staff members, you know, we still get that on a daily basis, yeah. don't we, Lisa? Mm -hmm. It's just, um, you know, a staff member telling us that, um, hey, can I come to work? My wife works with somebody mm -hmm. whose mother tested positive. Right, and, right. you know, we get all these kind of second and third generation type questions that are coming to us all the time. And it seems now that everybody knows somebody. Yeah. Um, you may be several people removed from it. That's right. But it's you hear about it so much now. It's yeah. like you wonder, am I okay? Am I not? So it's just yeah. a lot of the questioning now. Yeah, and you know, even some of the people that have been in our organization have have contracted it. You know, right. have, have gotten right. it. You know, family members. Sure. I think the two sure. two main ones that I think about that are higher level staff members that have gotten it, and that's not mm -hmm. here at River Landing, right. um, but in the organization, both of them got it from family members. Right. You know, one got right. it from her husband, and the other one got it from a, a daughter. Yep. So, yep. Um, you know, it just, yeah, it's hard, you know. It's and hard to maintain and a it's, completely safe and bubble it's, around and you. And apparently, it's, it's, as we're seeing, it's just, it's very contagious. Right, um, right. And it happens fast. Mm -hmm. So, um so we just have to, you know, keep our keep our guard up, keep doing what we've been trying to do. The th the, the three W's. Let's just mm -hmm. keep remembering those at this point. So, yep. um, and we're doing our weekly testing mm -hmm. again today. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've explained this in a previous show, but you know, now the state is following um, the federal guidelines in regards to testing, and so we have to follow um, what our. Uh, let me say it this way depending on the percentage positive in each county dictates, you know, how often you have to test your staff. So if your county is 5% or less, and it's a kind of a rolling period they keep looking at that on, then you only have to test your staff once a month. If your county's at between 5% and 10%, then you have to test weekly. And if your county's more than 10%, you have to, to test actually your staff twice a week. And we're talking about the the healthcare skilled nursing staff is what we're talking about. And so, you know, Guilford has been, we were actually fairly close to being no. under 5% at one right. time, but we have now, we've been running more like 5.9, 6.1% um, the last several weeks. So we're, we're pretty stuck in this once a week category, which is what we're doing. So, you know, we, pro we have approximately 75 to 78 staff members that we test on a weekly basis. Um, and, you know, Friends Homes does the same thing because they're in the same county as we are. Um, Glen Eyre, who's in Wake County, now Wake County has had less than 5%, so they've been on a monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. They've only tested once um, in the last four weeks, um, getting ready to test again. And then, you know, Scotia, of course, Scotia has, has been in Scotland County, and Scotland County has been double digits for a while, and so they've been testing twice a week, their staff, and um, although I see maybe that Scotland County is starting to come back a little bit, so maybe they can get back to just testing once a week as opposed to twice a week, but, you know, so that it's just a lot of various regulations and different things we have to follow when it comes to that, but, um, you know, the, the, the good news is, or at least we think it's going to be good news, I mean, I... I know a lot of you probably saw the report that came out um, yesterday. It, it took the stock market higher, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, the news about, um, I, I think it's a positive message that's coming out from uh, the drug uh, pharmaceutical company called uh, Pfizer, uh, P-F-I-Z-E-R, and, and uh, they're in working with a German company, I think it's called BioNTech, um, and they announced that they... Um, I think, you know, it's part of their testing that they're doing right mm -hmm. now that um, the first um, intermediate testing that they had done has shown that they have been, that they've had a 90% efficacy rate. I don't want to ever say that right. Efficacy? Efficacy yeah. rate. Efficacy yeah. rate. After the second dose, whatever exactly that means. I'm taking that to mean you'd have to have two doses in order to get to 90% or higher. But, you know, if that's true... That could be really positive, um, and my understanding is there's another um, drug manufacturer who has a similar um, drug that they're testing, or vaccine that they're testing, that would, should actually end up having the same results. Now, they're a little bit further behind Pfizer, I think, with their testing, but getting close. So, 
you know, the good news about this is if this all pans out, I was seeing, and you know, the, uh, there's still a lot of speculation oh, about yeah. this. We don't a lot know. Of questions yet. We don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah. you know, that was obviously a, a great news yesterday. Yeah. I know it lifted yeah. my spirits to think that we could possibly have something that could work for us, yep. uh, vaccine-wise. And you know, so you know, I was seeing some reports that you know, if this does work out, that you know, the first shipments of this uh, vaccine could actually start going out by the end of the year. Um, now, again, I, that's, you know, that's still speculation, I think, that the FDA has not approved this um, drug yet, and so, or the vaccine yet, and so we've got to wait for all that to happen, but it looked like they were painting a picture that if, um, with the FDA's process for approving this, mm -hmm. um, that they thought that that could happen as early as by the end of the year, and that they could be starting uh, to send out shipments of sure. this, so... You know, we can only hope. I mean, obviously right, we want something that's right. safe, but right. at the same time, you know, if we have something that's proven that it's going to work at least 90% of the time, that's fantastic. I mean, that would be, you know, that would be a, a game changer mm -hmm. for us and for our country and for the world. So right. Right. so it's pretty exciting, oh, um, yeah. and I'm hoping. I'm, I'm yeah. always going to go to the positive side. What's that? Yeah, it, it, gives, it gives us all some hope. It gives us hope, that yeah. They really, they're working on something. It, yeah. It's coming. It just, yeah. when? Yeah. So. So I'm excited about that. I, I think that that could be very good. So we'll, um, you know, as we kind of see how that progresses, we'll let you know. And I, and I mentioned this last Thursday, Lisa. You know, we have, uh, we have put all the PHI and Friends Homes communities on this uh, uh, list, listing, um, so that all the residents, all levels of care, all staff, all levels of care, uh, could be the one of the first ones to actually be eligible to get these right. vaccines um, to a partnership with CVS and Walgreens. Walgreens. So we mentioned that last uh, Thursday, but I'll mention it again in case somebody missed that. And um, I think that's, you know, again, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty pumped about this. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty pumped about this. So don't expect this to happen overnight. Right. Even if it works out, it's not going to be, uh oh, January 1, where's our right. vaccine? Right. It's probably not going to be that way. But you know what? There was, there was an estimate that um, we could possibly get this in the first quarter next year. So uh, we'll see. Yep. We yep. shall see. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to jinx it. But, um, you know, certainly some good news coming out yesterday, and I hope that continues. Yeah, me too. So um, We've just gotten, a, I don't know, a, a live update. Yes. One of our staff members, that yeah. Governor Cooper um, has made an announcement. Okay. We're staying in phase three, and he's changing the indoor gathering numbers. Okay. So um, we'll need to check into that a little bit to see okay. how it affects us. Okay. Um, so that breaking news right right now. Yeah. So okay. we'll, so have to take a, we'll have to take a look at that. To <laughs> we'll see. have to figure out if that's... We'll have to get some more information. Phase three, if it's... If it's Adding to the numbers or taking away from the numbers? So. Yeah, I, I believe it's taking away. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> so, um, and and kind of, I'm just assuming, following his train of thought here, we're getting close to the holidays. Large gatherings. We yeah. all know they're spread through large gatherings. Yeah. I mean, that's more potential. Yeah. So I think he's reducing the numbers, which we'll have to take a look at how that affects us here as a community. Yeah, we've always said that so we would have to be nimble. And we we'd ha will. if we, we have will. to cut back on our numbers, we cut back on our numbers. And we can make it happen. And we, we can, can do figure this. out a way to do that. So. so I don't know. He also, I don't know if he said a, a date that or time it would be effective. Um, I don't know that he did. No. Because a lot of times he makes no. it effective on Friday. I don't right. know if this one's immediate or will it not. This I'm could be not sure. Friday late in the day. <laughs> It could be. So this was just like um, just some breaking news that we need to research a little more. Yeah. He's, He's still, still answering, answering questions. questions. So okay. it's truly, it's 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 really live right now. Okay. Well, so, the good news though to so me we'll follow uh, up that with so that. far is that we're staying in phase three. Right. He's just right. cutting back. On, it sounds right. like he just come out be cutting back. And on it the numbers. sounds like that's really the biggest change for us might be the indoor gathering number. So. But you know we'll, what? We'll, we'll check into we'll it. We'll just. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll figure out how to do that. And, and we'll follow whatever the guidelines are. Yeah. I mean, that's what we'll So we'll, we'll have something that we can put out tomorrow or yeah. maybe even talk about on our Thursday show right. since we're Absolutely. back here on Thursday. Yep. So. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Going into holiday nothing guidelines. Like getting a, nothing, <laughs> like, 
Nothing like getting a curveball thrown at you right at the last minute. <laughs> oh, but That's you know, okay. this is kind of how it's been, Tom. Yeah, I know. Think about it. We just have to go we, adjust on the fly. And there's we, really not a pandemic um, handbook. There's not a pandemic playbook. We just kind of we just kind of go as we go here. Well, we're yes, so. there's a playbook now, but we're making it up as it goes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so Cindy so. is working on some holiday guidelines for us Cindy. related. Yes, Cindy yep, is. Cindy's doing that, and um, we plan to have it out in the boxes either tonight or tomorrow. We might need to adjust it now based on some news we've just received right now, <laughs> <laughs> because the the guidelines help with um, gatherings and socials, um, reviewing the numbers, wearing masks at all times while gathering in groups, no food in mass gathering groups, things like that. So it, yeah. it addresses those, those items. Um, family, family gatherings, if you're going to go out to a family gathering, it gives you some tips there as well as some questions you should be asking. Right. If you're going to be around somebody, there's, there's things that you wanna know. Right. Um, out of town trips, this is another big one. I think some folks are forgetting to let Cindy know yeah. when they're heading out of town for yep. things. And that could be going out of town for a funeral, a wedding, a right. birthday party, right. any kind of mass gathering like that, that is exposure to you, and then it means exposure to us as a community. Well, or, or so, going out of town and you're flying, or you're taking absolutely. a train, or absolutely. you're taking mass transportation. Yep. Yep. You, you still need to clear that right. through Cindy. Right. I All mean, that needs to go through Cindy yeah. to help determine, is it a full quarantine? Is it a modified quarantine? Yeah. So it just depends what your situation is. I wish we could blanketly say, if you do this, it's always this. It is not the case. No. Um, it really depends on your situation. When you get into your, your gathering, were people able to social distance and always wear masks? Were they not able to? All those kind of things go into what type of quarantine, if any, that there would be. So make sure you're following up with Cindy on out-of-town trips and overnight trips. So right. sometimes they're not overnight. Sometimes it's just a day trip for a funeral. Right. Um, but those are just, just as, could be just as much exposure as flying on a plane. So. Yeah. It really is something, please review it with Cindy. Uh, before you go, she likes to know some of the situations. She can also give you tips on things once you get to this event. Or she may even talk to you about it beforehand and you decide, you know, this isn't the best situation for me to put myself in. Right. There are times that maybe it's not right that I should go to this. Right. I know it, it might mean missing a wedding. It might mean missing a birthday party. But sometimes we do have to make those hard choices that really put us at risk that maybe we just shouldn't do. Um, so I know it's hard decisions to make, but we've all had to do that. Well, we all have. I mean, yeah. you know, just point in case, um, one of Sheila's family members, one of her cousins got married up in Ohio this weekend, and she was really upset about not being able to go. Sure, and sure. I get it, but... You know, I guess the good news is we had somebody that was doing a Facebook Live thing okay. or something like sure. that, and so, so you we watch actually it. watched the ceremony. It was and it was fine. That's great. I mean, at least people we got are a chance to see it. Yeah, yes. people are getting yes. creative with this getting stuff. Getting creative. And you know, this was the right decision for us to sure. make, not to sure. go Absolutely. and be a part of that. So, yep. and just because another state might have better or more uh, or less restrictive, maybe is the right way to sure. say it, gathering sizes. Right. It doesn't make it right. Right. Um, right. Cuz we all have seen, you know, that um it, it, in large gatherings like this, um right. it it seems to really just cluster right. and we get really right. ish, big issues with that. Absolutely. So. Okay. Um and I was talking to a resident today and she brought up you something You talk to a lot of residents, don't you? I do. <laughs> I do talk to a lot of <laughs> residents. But today, I had a special call from someone that um, kind of talking about, you know, our situation last week and, and really appreciating that resident that did the video for us and just kind of reviewing things and, you know, how it's time to, you know, get refocused again. And, you know, with the news of a vaccine, you know, we don't, also don't want to let our guard down because it's no. not here yet. Right. So we still really need to focus in. Yeah. And she said, do you remember that public safety uh, message that it was before, see something, say something? She said, you know, something like that could even work during pandemic times. Mm -hmm. um, she said, when I'm walking down the hall and I see somebody that maybe doesn't have their mask on, I should feel comfortable to go to them and say, oh, did you forget your mask? And then just as a reminder, 
most of us, if we're not having a mask on, it's probably because we forgot. Oh, yeah. And we just need a reminder. So um, I think she made a good point that all of us, we're, we're, we're all family here. We all should be, to be able to talk to each other and help each other. Yeah, absolutely. And really, in the end, all we're doing is trying to protect each other. That's right. Um, so we should feel comfortable with that. So I like that. See something, say something. Um, if, or if you see a large gathering or something, you know, talk to folks and be like, ooh, I don't know if that was the best thing to be able to do. Or, or if you find yourself in a situation like that, maybe you just share, I'm not feeling comfortable right now. I see people are taking their masks down, so I'm, I'm going to leave this event. Things like that. So I, I think it's okay for us to be open and honest with each other because we're doing it to help each other. That's right. It's, it's not to come down on someone. Right. It's truly just to protect our community the best we can. Right. We know we all have exposures. We, we do. We do. And we just have to try to limit that as, as much as we can and look out for each other. So I, I appreciated that call today. And if we can help build on see something, say something, I, I think that's a good message. Yeah, I, I didn't think it's all in the approach on how we it, approach absolutely. somebody, right? Absolutely, yes. You know, just, you know, somebody comes to me and says, hey, Tom, Exa where's your mask? Exactly. Hey, where's your mask? Remember? <laughs> like, Exactly. Because I've done that before. I've walked we, out of my office without a mask times on before. We forget. And I'm like, don't yes. be afraid to say something to me because you Absolutely. said it. Absolutely. It's not like I'm purposely not no, wearing it. I'm, no. I just forgotten to wear it. It so. is not. I don't feel anybody here is like that, that they're going to jump on us if we yeah. say, hey, did you forget? Yeah. You know, because we all have done that. Sure. We all have done that. And we, we just need to remind each other. Right. So, but great message. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I like that. Okay, everybody loved the River Landing masks. I can't tell you how many emails and calls we got. I, got from, I wore mine I know. today. It's so exciting. <laughs> so I believe everybody should have gotten one by now. They should have. So, so that was really good. And thank you for the positive comments on that. And um, like one of the emails said, just another way to bond us together. Yeah. And another reality that we are all in this together. That's so, right. So um, that was great. So thank you for your comments. And. We're glad we were able to do that. Yeah, that, so. that worked out pretty nicely. Yeah, it did. The timing was pretty I good, know. too, Couldn't as we said last week. Timing, right? So, yeah. Um, another good thing. Yeah. The lights in the gym. They have been replaced today. Oh. And they're already done. The gym opened back up. No way. That's fast. Yes. Yep. Right after lunchtime today, I think they were all done. So. Now, we need to just point out, we were doing our best to try and get the film company that, that's going to put the film over the windows. Right, right. We're trying to do that at the same time of the day, and the film hasn't come in yet. Right, so right. we're still so waiting we for the film to, to come part. in. Yep. So, but I don't know that we have to close down the gym for that part of it. We'll just have to pick a right. day maybe when it's not, um, not make a time in a day sure. when it's not so crowded yep. in there. Yep. So, but And that'll be good to get done, too. I, I yeah, know. Yeah, because we get and some glare on we that We do court. get some glare. Yeah. Yep. And hopefully that'll solve the glare problem. Yep, I Should. hope so, too. Um, don't forget, get an extra 10% off on apparel up in the clubhouse, yeah. and that's through November 25th, so make sure you check out the clubhouse. Yeah. A lot of great items. Um, I haven't gone up there yet, but I plan to. Absolutely, and, and good Christmas gifts. Yeah, there's some good stuff so, up there. Yep, so check it out before it's there's all gone. still gold. some good stuff to be had, as they Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Okay, reverse raffle. We are down to 10 Tickets. Ten tickets. Ten tickets. That's all we have left out of 300. Yep. So you better call like That's now yes. or tomorrow yes. if you really still want a ticket. Because you can even call right now. Michelle's right here in the room. 336. If you want a ticket. 389 <laughs> 4103. She is right here in the room right now. 336 389 4103. Maybe there's a prize for the first one that calls in. Like what? Like another $10 gift card? <gasps> yes. All right. $10 Target gift card for the first person that calls in to buy a raffle ticket. Okay, here we go. 336-389-4103. Okay. Three, three, six, three, oh, three. Call. Call now. <laughs> <laughs> We're down to 10, and Tom and I don't want to have to buy the rest. No, we Call don't. now. We bought we'll a, pay you. We bought enough at this point, <laughs> I think. <laughs> we have done our share. Yes, we have. <laughs> we have. Oh, so if anybody can help us out. 10 more tickets. All right. Okay, now we're into questions. Oh, we are into questions. Do we need to say any more about the reverse raffle? Well, some of our questions address the reverse raffle. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
But you know, if we find we miss you know, one. <laughs> have you noticed that we didn't go through the we agenda didn't. together we today? Didn't. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to, so we're not helping each so, other out very well today. So, so if, sorry about that. If we miss some things, we can address them after the questions then. <laughs> Just in case yeah. we, we might have missed one. So one question we've had this yes. week. What questions? What time can I pick up my chili box on Friday for the reverse raffle and where? It's a great question. Yes. For those of you that have bought reverse raffle tickets. Yes. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. So if you've bought a reverse raffle ticket and you can pick up your meal between 4.30 and 5.30 on Friday. Now, there's two pickup locations based on where you live. Oh. So if you live outside, outside one of the homes, you're going to pick it up in the clubhouse between 4.30 and 5.30. If you live in the main building, then you're going to pick it up in the creamery between 4.30 and 5.30. Oh. So two very convenient locations. Very convenient. Can't, Can't be any better than that. Can't get much better than that. No. So. No. Okay. So that's one question we've had this and week. And there was two choices of chili, right? Yes. Beef chili or chicken chili. <sighs> you cannot beat that. You know, with the tickets I bought, I split it in half. Yes. I think I did too. Yeah. So. They're both really good choice. Because we, we bought several tickets. We did. So we. <laughs> We split up the chili. <laughs> okay, I think I have another reverse raffle question. If I ordered a raffle ticket but haven't gotten it yet, who should I call? This is an easy one. Call Michelle. 336. 389 4106. No, it's 4-3. No, that's my number. Do not call me. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay, don't call me on that. You can call me for other things. But if you don't have your reverse raffle ticket, it's 336-389-4103. Yes. Okay? How quickly you forget. Woo. That was a close one. <laughs> oh, I love it. Woo. Okay. I love it. okay. We're, we're struggling today, but we're, we're going to get we through are. this. We are. We're getting through this. All right. Okay. If I use Link's Drive... And the fast pass reader doesn't work because we found it's intermittent. Right. So sometimes it isn't going to work for you. I think Homer said it was like one in every fifteen, 15? to twenty. Yeah. Is not so it's, it's not picking up. It's not. Yep. It's not. It's the reader as you're coming in with your car. The the sticker that's on your car. That's what seems to be sticking. We're still working at some on point. some interference issues. Yeah, and I'm not so, sure. We're not sure what that is yet. But but we we've opened it back up because you can use your resident badge. Yep. Also, there's a button on that little box in there as you come little up. call box. Yep. yep. On that call box, there's a little button you can push, and that's going to connect you to the gatehouse over on John Knox. So when you do that, they're going to come on and say, they're going to ask you who you are, just to verify that you're, you're who you are, and they can see you through that camera there as well. And then they will be able to open the gate for you. And that's but, obviously only if it's stuck. That's right. I mean, if, you, if that's it doesn't right. open for you. Sometimes your Most of the time, it's, you're going to go right through. That's right. Right. Or make sure you have your badge. We want you to be wearing your badge anyway. You should have your badge with you. And if you have that, you can scan that as well when you get up to that, that speaker box. And that's very so. easy to do. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Can you clarify the number six on the EVS six-step cleaning process? So Joe and his team yeah. did a presentation last Friday. It was a very good presentation. It was. Uh, he it was. and Christy did a great job. So. We had a lot of great feedback from it, and he's putting out... He's putting out, he put out, <laughs> He's putting he, out. <laughs> he put out the six step process in everybody's box, I believe. Yeah. So people have been reviewing it, which is good. And I had a clarification question. Number six, and it's titled inspection. It says inspection is done by the housekeepers to make sure they didn't miss anything. We also will ask residents if they have anything that we need to do before we go to the next appointment. In normal times, that's how it works. Yeah. So that is normally how our process is. But because we're in the pandemic times, we ask you to leave a note on your counter if there's things that you want us to make sure we hit. Kitchen counter. During your appointment time. Yeah. Okay. So just wanted to clarify that. It doesn't mean you can be there with your housekeepers now. That has not changed any. Right. We still want you out of the home when they're cleaning. And that's just reducing, reducing risk of exposure from, on either side. Um, 
So just want to make sure you do know that inspection that normally happens, and our team does it before they leave, they inspect, but we don't want a face-to-face -face between you and our housekeeping staff at this point. Leave notes and say, can you make sure you touch up this area? Can you make sure you clean this area? Right. Those kind of things. So just leave us a note on your kitchen counter, and our, that way your team will know that. So that was a good clarification yeah, question. Yeah, that was, that Thank was you. good. But, you know, no kidding, I was actually here for Joe's and Christy's presentation, and they did a really good job. It was, you know, that's a big deal, the, the EBS is. portion of what Abs we do here. Absolutely. And so um, I know yep. there have been some questions about that. Mm -hmm. So that was a, they did a good job explaining yep, all that. Absolutely. And if you have ever have any questions, call Joe. Yeah. Joe, Joe loves to come out and um, talk with you about something. We, you know, we make sure we do that safely. He can talk with you on the phone. Um, those kind of things. So Joe is always open to that, and he's the EBS director. So feel always feel comfortable to contact him as well. Right. Okay, last one. What if the dining room runs out of reservations for Thanksgiving? Oh, boy. That would be bad. Yes, but okay. that is not going to happen. So we don't run out of reservations for Thanksgiving. We currently have a set time that we take reservations from this time to that time. But let's say... We fill all those slots. Then we will add another seating. So we want to make sure everybody knows that you will be able to get a time. It doesn't mean you might not get your first choice, though. Yeah. I don't want you to think that just because you want 1130, you're going to get 1130. So, but there will be a time available for reservation. Or if you don't want to do reservations, maybe you find that's too late. I really just don't eat that late, and you right. only have a 2 o'clock left then you can go through the bistro. That's We're right. going to be having the Thanksgiving meal in there as well for takeout. So that is always an option as well if you don't like the time that, that you may have left for reservations. That's correct. So lots of options. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but the bistro meal, it's only Thanksgiving meal that day, correct? Correct, correct. yep. So. Yep, no supper that night. No, no supper. No, right. And, and no nothing else besides right. the Thanksgiving right. meal. Absolutely. In the bistro. It's just the Thanksgiving meal. Right. You're correct. The stations aren't open. That's correct. I right. want to make sure that everybody understands Absolutely. that. So that that's, it's the yeah. Thanksgiving meal on Thanksgiving Good day. Good point. Yes. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all. It's a wonderful meal. It's a great meal. So I should not say that's all it is. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful meal. It so. will be a great meal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It always is. They, they, they yep. do a great job. With they that. do. Even during pandemic times, the menu looks amazing. Yes. So they do a great job. So should we mention anything about, you know, the fact that we, you know, we mentioned that um, Bubba is not going to be coming we did. We did. as yep. our guest host for the reverse raffle. But we so have, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Who's coming? Okay. Very good. Yes. Remember, we were, we're keeping, keeping that a, a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that hasn't helped us sell the last 10 tickets, though. So... <laughs> So it's a well, mystery. Well, maybe we decided maybe we shouldn't tell them because we do want to sell the last tickets. We do want to tickets. sell the last 10 tickets. Since Bubba's not going to be here. But no, no. But it we will promise be. to do our best to make it entertaining. Absolutely. Nonetheless. It, it will be. Yeah. It will be. It's, it's still going to be very entertaining. It'd be a little different, though. Yeah. And it takes two people to make up for one Bubba. <laughs> That's all we can say. Yes. Two people. Two, two, two for the people price of, this Two time. for the price of one. Two time. for the price of one. Yes. So it's definitely worth getting a ticket. And we still have 10 left. <laughs> yep. And Michelle is sitting there with not answering any phone calls. <laughs> so so you're still going to hear us probably talk about so this the, Thursday. The $10 the gift card <laughs> didn't work, Lisa. Gift card didn't work. We could even bribe you to buy a ticket. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Homer, do you want to buy a, a, a what's that? <gasps> a bottle of wine might have done it. Instead Are you serious? No, wow. they, they won't do that. Yeah, but I no, I don't think wine would. I don't think so. I either. don't think wine's going to make a difference. But we can offer no. that. We can offer a bottle of wine instead of the ten dollar gift wine card. If somebody would rather or a have a gift that. card. Yeah. Either one. Either one. Okay. I think. Okay. Sounds good. It's, and if what that was that? And what was mind? that number again? <laughs> oh, she just got a call as soon as we said a bottle of wine. The number to call is 336-389-4103. You know, maybe people thought they had to buy all 10 tickets. And well, we weren't saying that. No. Just buy a ticket or however many. <laughs> I mean, 
If you want to buy all 10. <laughs> Lisa, I think we've done enough. It's okay. Trying to sell these tickets. <laughs> okay, I think that was our last we've question. We've done well with that, actually. We have. To that's be down 290 to 10, out of the 300. That, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty good. So. so, And we've had tremendous support from here. Yeah. So... So we've been kind of waiting to s yeah. announce this. Um, so, you know, we do have something that we want to share with everybody. Um, it's going to go out in the boxes tonight, um, hopefully tonight. I'm working on the announcement right now, but um, we felt it was important to share this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have, um, we have received uh, a resignation notice from one of our leadership team members here at River Landing. Mm -hmm. um, Amy Rosen has put in her resignation here, and uh, I'll be the first one to say it, it, it really caught me off guard. Me too, yes. Um, but she explained what was going on with her and her family and mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity she has to actually moved to South Florida yes. and work as an executive sales director. I think this is a, an elevated role over mm -hmm. what she's doing here um, to help a retirement community that's in South Florida. Um, and who has, that community is actually apparently having some occupancy challenges. And Amy's never wanted to, to move, go away from a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. She she's, loves a challenge. She's, she's yep. very good at that. I mean, she's yep. proven herself time and time and time again here. And so, you know, that's, um, that's really hard. That's a little bit of a bitter pill for us to swallow because we love her and we, uh, we want her to stay. But um, we get it. I mean, you know, we know that, um, that um, they've got family down there. David's got family down there. Um, you know, I think um, she's got a friend that lives pretty close by to where they're moving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, we know Jacob has Jacob is graduated from high school this right, year and going right. off to going college. Going off to college. So, you know, I think they just felt like the time was right to be able to make a switch. And so um, we did our best to talk her out of it. We did. We but, tried. But, um, you know, I didn't, I also at the same time, you know, when somebody makes up their mind to do something, you don't right, want to push too right. hard. And so, you know, we're going to, we're going to miss her. So she's given us a month's notice. And so December 9th will be her last day here at River Landing. And, and we wanted to let you know because we're going to start immediately with, um, looking for her replacement, um, and, you know, those are big shoes to fill. To, Absolutely, to fill. yes. Um, she's been here eight years, and she's done a, an incredible job. Mm -hmm. So um, so I know this will probably come as a shock to all of you. Um, I know that um, Amy might get inundated <laughs> over the next couple of days with folks um, reaching out to her, but remember, she's going to be here for another month, so, you know, you'll have plenty of time to, to give her well wishes and um, to wish her well as far as this new venture that she's moving into but um, and as she expresses bittersweet to her so this, yeah, this it is. might be a hard you know next yeah, four weeks for her is, as well this, this is not a leaving because no, she's upset into anything exactly. or that she um and it's not that she doesn't want to be here she just no, I, no. I think this is a unique opportunity and it I think is. that's what she was saying it's just a unique opportunity for her to be able to do this and so when she was sharing this with us you know it was yeah, it was, we, we understood. Yeah, I mean, we understood absolutely. why this would be something important to her to yeah. do. So, anyway, so you all are hearing this first. Mm -hmm. um, we are just pushing this out now. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll have a notice either out tonight or tomorrow um, officially announcing that. But, um, you know, like I said, we'll move on from here. And um, some of you may or may not have met Laura Lowe. Laura Lowe is our regional um, uh, marketing director. And so Laura um, will be kind of helping to fill in and helping out Martha and Amy, um, Amy uh, Bray, that is, mm -hmm. um, after Amy Rosen has um, moved off to, to Florida. Um, Laura's going to help us in the, in the interim to try until we get to a point where we can hire a new person right, to come right. in. So like I said, we're starting a new search for that. So more to come on that as mm -hmm. we get mm -hmm. a little closer with um, naming somebody as her successor. Okay. Okay. We have birthdays. Birthdays. Today, we have Nancy Van Norman ah, and Art Drennan. Very good. Happy birthday to both yes. of you. Yes. And Wednesday, we have Roberta Stallnecker and Helen Kalacki. Okay. And for staff birthdays, yesterday, we had Lisa Love in nursing. Lisa Love. Today, Maricela Fuentes in nursing. 
And tomorrow we have Grace Hudson in oh, dining. Oh, okay. So, great. Yep, great birthday. That's good. Happy birthday. That's awesome. Okay. So do we have a trivia winner? We, I bet we do. Yeah. We must have because of the. Let's see. Michelle, do we have yes, a trivia winner? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. Um, so the question today was, in what world city was the world premiere of Handel's Messiah presented in April 1742? And the answer is Dublin, Ireland. And the person giving us Does the question Does anybody want to guess today, who gave us this question? <laughs> I, we thought maybe people would, would guess it from, yeah. from knowing who. So the question today was from Jim Kalacki. Jim Kalacki, so yeah. We wanted to say, yep, we wanted to save that for the end. And, and Jim Kalacki was the winner of the prize, is that right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He wasn't. No. Uh, <laughs> the winner today actually is Jack Barry. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yep. So very good. Congratulations. That's great. That's great. Yes. Um, okay. So what's coming up this week, Lisa? Okay. So Wednesday, tomorrow, River Landing Veterans Day program at oh, 1030. That's good. And then to follow, we'll have the HPU Veteran Day program at 11 o'clock. And all this will be presented on 1390. So you want to stay tuned for that. Um, starting at 1030 and then following with the HPU uh, program as well, 1390. Then at 3 o'clock tomorrow, the Furl Leadership Session led by Bonnie Smith with interviewing of the Wellness Center team members. So that will be, that will be a good one too. Mm -hmm. And on Thursday, the River Chimes with guest Lois Edwards to talk. River Chimes? Oh, sorry. <laughs> River Churns. <laughs> We do have the river chimes here, just so people know that. Thank you. But some of you may not even experience it yet. It's it's been it's been a while. hiatus since yeah. pandemic. Yeah. But shout out to the river chimes. So. Um, that was a nice shout out. It was. And a great recovery, might I add. That was a great <laughs> recovery on your part. Well, if you haven't heard them, they they sound beautiful. Um, river churns with guest Lois Edwards to talk about the Employee Appreciation Fund. Yeah. We have some questions that folks have sent in, so we're going to address some of those and, and how we're going to do the distributing this year and all that good stuff. So right. you don't want to miss Thursday show. Right. Uh, Friday, reverse raffle starting at 6 p.m., 1390. Yeah. So very exciting. Okay. Yep. All right. And so <laughs> did we sell a ticket? We didn't sell a ticket. Uh, the wine didn't help. That's okay. <laughs> Ten more left. We're good. We're All right. Good. We'll save the gift card for another time. Yes. And a bottle of wine. Yep. We might share it after this, <laughs> after this session to. today. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right. So I've got, a, I've got a, a joke or story, I guess I should say. And you know what? I'm drawing a blank as to who sent this to me, and I hmm. feel bad about that. Um, I'll have to and look at that because we've got some stuff from Phyllis Hall, Phyllis Hall that right. we're going to do on Thursday, I think. Right, but right. I don't think this came from Phyllis. I think this came from somebody else. But okay. anyway, uh, a woman walked into the kitchen to find her husband stalking around with a fly swatter. What are you doing, she asked. Hunting flies, he replied. Oh, killed any, she said. Yep, three males and two females came the answer. Intrigued, the wife asked, how can you tell them apart? The husband said, well, the three males were on the beer can and two, the two females were on the phone. <laughs> That's cute. It is cute. Yeah. That's a cute one. Oh. We'll just leave it at that. It's a cute one. That's right. Yeah, it's a cute That's one. That's right. All right. All right. Uh, and I didn't say beers. I just said beer nope, can. Said there beer. was no, there yep. was no plural on that one. So. Just one beer can. One beer can. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we've murdered this episode as Ooh. much as we possibly can. <laughs> wow, that was pretty long, too. All right, well, we hope you all have a great Tuesday afternoon. Uh, hope to see you again on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, Lois Edwards. And so that'll be good. And so um, we just hope you all stay safe out there, okay? Absolutely. Please stay safe. Think about the holidays. Thursday we'll probably talk a little bit, like I said, on the show about restrictions maybe right, with right, what the right. governor has just Absolutely. changed because we're going to have to look at that right. and see what we're going to have to do. Yeah. So, all right. We love you all. Have a great Tuesday afternoon.